Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Yesterday, we had one of the craziest glitches I've ever seen happen inside of Ultimate Team relating to players being able to grab the ball and run on the pitch with it into the goal to count for a goal. It's insane. We're going to look at that today and talk about how it is fixed now, but how that really impacted some market yesterday and a lot of the game. Also, yesterday, Trailblazers team number two dropped. We had a, a SBC that was expected, but maybe not as good as we hoped. Some decent objectives and players in packs. The prices we just can't comprehend. We're going to talk about that and more related to today's content in the video. If you're excited for it, as always, drop a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. Let's start off by talking about this glitch, guys, because this happened before the content dropped yesterday, and this is just ridiculous, right? If you were not aware... This is the glitch, right? You basically would take a player with the trickster plus play style because they can do a fancy, like a fake shot that flicks the ball up in the air. And somehow you could use different controls somehow to let your player, like the ball would stick to the player. And then eventually the ball would just like pop up to their hand. And you can see here that the player would just run all the way down the pitch into the goal. And it would count as a goal without dropping the ball. It was absolutely Insane and this was going crazy yesterday people were avoiding playing the weekend league because of this P Player prices of the players that have this trickster playstyle plus went crazy Alan St. Maximin yesterday to start the day on Friday was 4,000 coins. He went all the way to 8,500 coins as people were going and buying these players to go do this glitch. Even players like Neymar. Neymar, after the content drop yesterday, was like 310,000 coins. And, I mean, he did drop a little bit afterwards. Even in the morning, he was 320. But a lot of the market's been dropping in the past couple hours. And we'll talk about that here in a second. But it was really Rolfo, Di Maria, Maximin. Those were the cards that moved the most because of this as people were trying to go out and to do this glitch. Now, like I said, it has been patched. Just a crazy, crazy thing uh, that EA have said. They have patched by taking away the Trickster Plus playstyle from all of the players that have that playstyle in Ultimate Team. Playstyle Plus, by the way, not just regular playstyle, playstyle plus. So, like R9 Rye is posting here, it's crazy to see like Dino and Di Maria and Rolfo without those playstyles in game because they've literally been removed from the cards. EA posted this. And um, I think a lot of people after this were like, all right, it's safe to play Weekend League because people were not playing Weekend League when this glitch was going on because a lot of people were doing it. And, you know, they were losing games because players were just running into the goal, which is absolutely ridiculous. But the biggest question is, and Foot Sheriff tweeted this yesterday, but are people going to be banned? Foot Sheriff said that EA will release a hotfix for the Trickster Plus today, which they did. He said, I've heard they will be banning several people who have used it. I don't know how they're going to ban people that abused it unless they actually like watched them play it on stream or play it and post clips about it. Or you know what I'm saying? Because how do you track this, right? Of course, you could look and see who maybe went 20 and 0 in Weekend League that normally doesn't go that way. Like I'm sure EA have tons of data inside of the game where they could figure a lot of this out. But number one, how much effort do they want to put into that? And number two, how many people like actually really went all out with this glitch and really went all out like going 20 0 in weekend league type of thing that would still take a lot of time so i don't know how much the ban part of that is going to be realistic i mean guys they don't ban people for transferring coins on this game uh and yes people have still been transferring coins like i was watching a sam kerr look at that 1.6 mil for sam kerr this happens all the time on the market so I don't know. Bans may happen, but if you did it like once or twice and just to like it was crazy and you wanted to try it out, like I don't think you have to worry at all. But that is the craziness that happened yesterday as probably one of the most ridiculous gameplay glitches I have ever seen. Now, I didn't take part of it. I didn't do it at all. I was actually asleep when it was really happening most often uh, before people started like saying, nah, I probably shouldn't do this. But that was absolutely wild. Now, that's kind of over with, right? Because EA has posted that. We'll see if we get any more news and information about that today. But let's look at Trailblazers Team 2 content because kind of as expected, guys, yesterday was like a midday. That's the best way to describe it with all the Trailblazers 2 stuff that went on. Now, we did get a decent SBC. Julian Alvarez, right? Big name player. High, high work rates. 4-4. He's got the Relentless Playstyle Plus, which we did see in the leaks. The leaks were spot on. And I think that 
kind of makes this card less desirable. A striker without any play styles in the shooting category. Good stats, good dribbling, and actually not that expensive. I'm going to be completely honest. 375k for this Julian Alvarez is not that bad. I just don't think it's amazing either. And since it wasn't that great, there were actually link investments to this card. Some city players like Doku, Ruben Diaz, they actually just fell in price a little because not as many people were going and doing this SBC that it, maybe we expected or, or wanted to see. So like Ruben Diaz right now is down like five to 6,000 coins. Really, it's not a big drop. If you bought Ruben Diaz for like 115 or less, like this is a card that could definitely still continue to rise as he is one of the only special center backs in the Premier League and with great links. So I would say you can keep a watch for that. But that was like our only SBC yesterday besides... Kind of a good one as well. I guess I can't skip over this. We had an SBC for a team of the week player pick, and it was two 83 rated squads with one 85 rated uh, requirement inside of that second 83 squad. It was a 103 player pick, and we get to do it again today. That was probably the best SBC yesterday, and it's going to refresh again today. So, guys, we're going to look at fodder. 85s are already starting to go up as people are investing for this one again today. Um, I just think the 83 rated squad part is really easy. It's the 85 rated player that is making the market move a bit because a lot of people maybe have to go out and buy that to do the player pick. But that's kind of a fun player pick. I mean, is it a great value? Eh, it's okay value, but... You know, that's something that is there and kind of fun to do. And it gives you kind of that, that rush of doing a gamble pack, I guess, for a pretty cheap price. Also, we had an objective yesterday or a couple objectives. They give out a lot of XP. This almost seemed like a mistake right away when they dropped the Trailblazers Palacios. If you do this perfect pass, you get 2000 XP. I think this is what EA is doing to say, okay, if you need XP to finish off this season, because we're crazily enough, guys, only what, 12 days left of this season, which is wild. There's 2000 XP right here for go getting three through ball assist in rivals or champs or squad battles. So that's a big W there. And then also, well, first of all, this Palacios card, not that great. Medium high work rates, no play style plus, four star weak foot. Not a bad card by any means, but just not amazing. Not as hyped as we maybe thought it was going to be. But really, this was the best one uh, in objectives yesterday. The Evolutions Expert. Put your favorite Evolutions players to work. Basically, you play and score goals with your Evo cards. This is what we need more of. EA, I like this a lot because you, number one, get a lot of XP from inside of here. You get a couple decent packs, but we get rewarded for using our Evolutions players, which are kind of behind the curve for all the Evolutions that they've released, apart from just a couple of players. I feel like most of us maybe don't start our Evolution cards in our ultimate teams, our main squads that you'd play Weekend League with. And this is cool because you actually get some... Um, rewards for using those Evolutions players. More like this, please. I like this. This is nice. This is a W. Thank you, EA, for that right there. So that was, I think, objective content was almost better than SBC content besides the player pick yesterday with that. And now we got to talk about the team of cards that is in packs, guys, because it is a decent team. It really is. Like, there are some nice players in here. Um, you know, the James Ward Prowse is a nice, he had a nice upgrade over his gold card 50,000 coins for a Prem Center mid plus 23 pace. Probably the most usable Ward Prowse we've ever had. Only 50,000 coins with a great play style plus. Uh, he is three star, three star, which is the biggest downfall to his card. But like, that card is good. Um, you know, I think Harry Kane's card is sick. He got plus eight pace with the power shot playstyle plus. That's nice. Robertson got a nice pace boost as well. This promo kind of takes players that aren't always the most usable. Kane, Robbo, Ward, Prowse, giving them some pace, giving them some nice stat boost. Cancelo upgrade kind of small. Um, you know, Brant's upgrade is decent. This, this is a decent team, guys. It really is. And now, a lot of the cards, I think, especially with the pack weight yesterday, I don't know, man. I don't have any of these cards right now besides two Andrew Robertsons. I bought two Robertsons at 202. I'm not looking for big rises today on these cards as we head into Saturday. For the reason that, you know, yesterday they fluctuated a decent amount, but it just seems like the pack weight's very low for these. Like, I didn't pack any. I didn't see many people packing any. And you go into the store and you see it's like 4% chance from a 100K pack. But for some reason... There's a decent amount of supply on the market. I don't know if it's a lack of demand that people don't want to buy these or if it's supply. Like Harry Kane only has four to five pages, maybe six. But like look at all these cards that are listed here, like 440K. 
like I don't know. I just think that with these cards today, if you're trading with them into the early hours, I think you'll want to be careful. Like, let's say you bought a Marquinhos, you bought a Harry Kane, maybe you bought a Cancelo to try to trade with today or just to use even. I think that these prices may drop as we get towards content, and I think they might drop off a lot. So watch for a quick spike this morning on Saturday on these, but then maybe some drops later on because they seem like sneakily supplied with that. Now, since content was kind of mid yesterday, there were some prices on the market that did do nice. And this is something that I want you guys to kind of remember and to look forward to on content Fridays that are not very hyped. You always see usually an hour or two of prices that go bananas and upwards in price because people are going back out on the market and buying cards for their teams to play the weekend league. And this Bon Mati is a great example of a card that that happened to yesterday. Golds, icons, heroes, out of pack special cards yesterday, literally after the content drop happened, it was like a buying frenzy. Everybody went back out to the market to buy these cards. Bon Mati was 220 before the content drop. She was down at 200,000 coins right away when the content drop happened, and she actually went all the way to 230K. Now she's back down, as you can see here, to 204, and maybe even starting to rise a little bit. But there was just kind of like a two-hour window where everything just started exploding on the market. A lot of prices really went crazy. I'm going to try to win this one here on bid, if like 203 if I can. That'd be a good price. But a lot of cards started to fly up in price, right? Golds like Bonmati, informs like Jude, Inform June, I think, went from 400,000 coins to like 388. It says 427, but he was legit for a, a couple of minutes, at least I saw, like 440,000 coins. There were some big spikes in price. Um, Vander Sar was an icon that went up a bunch. I guess there was, oh my gosh, he's still 630,000 coins. Yeah, you can see, right, this huge spike. He actually went up to 700,000 coins. What a spike for him, right? A really rare icon. Stuff like that was happening a lot yesterday on the market on out of packs cards like Informs, some of the old Trailblazers from team number one. We saw some big spikes on them. Salah's actually back down. He was 970, was what he is right now. Yesterday, he went from 950 all the way up to 1.05. He was up 100,000 coins. Now he's back down a little bit. That happened on with Jude's card. Griezmann was like 730. Happened with a lot of different items that are out of packs. After yesterday's content as well, like Lewandowski was 515, Joao Pedro 360, that's up from where he has been. Other road to the knockouts that are really rare continue to go up in price. DePaul's over 300,000 coins, right? He just continues to go up because of that. So the market was a really good place to trade yesterday um, if you timed it right. Now, it's getting kind of interesting as we head into today, guys. Like what is going to happen today on Saturday with the market because like we mentioned some prices have started to slide and like you saw the Bonmati here right Bonmati is look maybe starting to go back up a little bit as we go into the early Saturday hours today as people are going out buying cards for some teams to play foot champs and stuff but the market really started to slide on especially on some of those golds as I look at footbin right now and I look at some of these more meta cards Rashford 174k okay now we just updated to 182 so i'm recording this in the early morning hours of the uk you can see like he was down at 179 after being 192 yesterday you're seeing these prices start to go back up holland was 240 now he's 219 right uh tonali 68k tonali 67k he dropped off a ton yesterday he was 82,000 coins, right? You can see this, this slide here. Maybe the pack weight on gold was actually pretty good yesterday. Maybe it's a lack of demand, or maybe it's just, I don't know. Maybe people are just selling gold cards to try out new promo cards or uh, switching to specials in their team. I'm not entirely sure 100% what it is, but gold cards are down a lot. And if you're waking up today, as we start to see our these these prices start to move, if you're waking up today and you're like, Nate, what can I potentially buy? What I would tell you to do is, Go down this most popular pages list on Flipbin and look for cards that are cards that a lot of people like to use in their teams that are like 50, 60, 70K or less. That's a pretty safe budget. That are cards that are again pretty meta, like Rudiger, 53K. He was 61K. Now, do I expect him to go to 61K again today? Probably not. But Rudiger at 53K, maybe he goes back to like 57 or 58,000 coins. I think there could be some rises on the market today on Saturday morning as people just wake up and go play champs. Tamori is a card that we flipped on Monday. He was just 52K. This is a card I would definitely keep an eye on 
Um, for a lower budget card that a lot of people may wake up today and, and buy to go play games, I think this is a type of card that you could potentially buy today. Now, if you're going to buy a gold card like this, this is what I would do. Try to snipe it in the early hours today. Soon after you watch this video, go look at some prices. Up until maybe two, three hours before the content drop today, I would expect prices to be doing pretty well. Once we get closer to content, just like we saw on, we talked about this on Thursday with like marquee matchups, right? Prices will probably dip back down once again. So I like the cheaper stuff because I mean, especially as you get casuals that get on the game today and, and go buy players for their teams, I think you'll see some of those lower tier golds that have been dropping all evening uh, go up a little bit. Now, some golds I'd be careful with like Griezmann, uh, Jude was out of packs for the past week. Di Lorenzo is one of my favorite cards to trade with when it comes to golds. But at the same time, I was just looking at his card. He's dropped off a ton in the past day. But so many of these cards that are listed up for Di Lorenzo are ones that people invested in. Look at all these Di Lorenzos, man. They are no games played, multiple owners. These are people that did not sell the Di Lorenzos before he went back into packs, and now the price is coming down. He's down a lot. He's the best Serie A right back. He could go from 11,000 coins today up to like 13, 14K. That's the type of fluctuation that you're looking for. So get hunting on the market for some golds. If you want to try to make a flip, just try to keep it to a cheaper budget because I think it's it's the prices today are going to move not a ton. So if you buy a cheaper player, like I got Di Lorenzo on bid for 8K, right? Like that's that's a nice bid. I'll be able to sell that hopefully for like 13, 14 today. But if you get on those lower tier, you have less tax. So if the card goes up, you know, four or five K, you're making two K a card, three K a card on something like this. Whereas if you buy somebody who's 90 K and they go up 7,000 coins, you spent 90 K to make 2000 coins, right? Cause your tax is almost five K. That's kind of the way I'm looking at it for the gold market today. Now, let's talk about content today on Saturday as well, because we do have at least an idea of what's coming. We got Alvarez yesterday. Javi Simons today is what we assume we're going to get. Now, remember last week we had another player SBC. I think it was Declan Rice that was leaked, right? We did not end up getting Declan Rice until, what was it, Sunday or Monday. We had the SAR SBC instead. So whether it's Javi Simons today or somebody completely different, watch out for Foot Sheriff or anybody else on Twitter leaking cards because I would 100% expect to see a Trailblazers player SBC today. Um, and if there is one, I'm not expecting it to be a massive one as well. Saturdays are usually pretty quiet days, guys. If you can completely think about it, look back. Saturdays are usually pretty quiet. They had a store pack into the store. They refreshed the other packs. Uh, the promo cards fluctuate a bit. It's kind of more a day to just, you know, catch up, play your games, get your rewards, uh, and do stuff like that. And then maybe on Sunday or Monday, they drop one of those bigger SBCs, which is what we're looking forward to right now in terms of big SBCs because we had a pack code that was updated yesterday. Remember that max 86 hero? That's gone. EA updated that pack code for a max 87 base icon player pack. That's the first icon pack of the year, guys. And also, this pack looks woeful. This might be the worst icon upgrade SBC we've ever had, but it's the beginning of the year and a lot of those icons um, that are 87 rated and below are still like kind of cool because it's the beginning of the year and let's say you pack somebody like Sol Campbell who's 270,000 coins who would be a part since he's 86 rated, he would be packable from this SBC. Like you would be, you'd be happy with that, right? 81 pace, 87 defense, 88 physical. That's a card that you could potentially pack out of this. I think there's like a very small set of players that is packable from this. And actually the most expensive player that you could pack is Fernando Torres because he is 87 rated Essien, I think is the second most expensive card. So obviously you're not going to have the heavy hitters in there like um, Cruyff, R9, Pele, stuff like that. It's going to be lower to middle tier icons. Still some good ones in there though um, that, you know, people will want to do this SBC. It's the first icon pack of the year, guys, right? Even though we had a max uh, 87 hero, right? That one, that one gave some good cards, but honestly, that one, a lot of people wanted to do because it was the first one. A lot of people were going to want to do this one as well because it's the first one. Now, we already looked at fodder a little bit, and we saw that prices are starting to rise. Um, let me just preface this by saying, do I think this SBC is coming today? No, I don't. I think it's probably going to be Sunday like the hero was last week, maybe Monday. Could it be today? I mean, technically, yeah, it could. It's the weekend now, but I think there's a lower percentage chance today than later on. But guys, fodder right now 
just continues to rise. Like we mentioned, 85s just like exploded in price in the last hour or two. They were 5K, you could get them on a bid under 5,000 coins, and they just exploded to like 5.6K. You can tell they went up yesterday. These could go higher today, but man, with how high fodder is right now, the way that I would look at fodder is a very risky investment, but it could go up, right? People are going to want to do this player pick, this pack when it comes out. So you could invest in fodder if you want to. I think it's going to be like a 100 to 150K SBC. So 85s, 86s, 87s, but that's where a lot of people are investing right now. So honestly, the, the safest play for me with this would be if you want to do this icon SBC, I would say start saving up fodder however you can get it from weekend league rewards and stuff like that and only buy the fodder that you maybe need to do the SBC and it's really not a great time with fodder as high as it is to go in for like an all-in investment unless you really want to try something risky um, and I mean this could be an SBC that does you know make that fodder go crazy high like if they release an 87 base icon and they require an 85 rated squad with like an 87 inside of it then 87s might go to like 22k or something nuts like that you know actually and i might have to check what's their price range is 20k for a lot of these 87s that's one of the other problems with this is these guys don't have much more room to go before they hit their max prices ea need to update some of these price ranges as 86 is like 86s and 87s are 3k away from their max price so that's another reason why i don't like fodder because it's so high it's not like last week where i was like oh yeah fodder good investment this week it's like eh, not really at least right now unless we see some supply or something that changes fodder is really just very very expensive for me and i'm not a huge fan of investing in that right now but if you want to do the sbcs by all means stick some in your club get enough so that you can get the sbc done and then kind of go from there. Really, it's that icon pack that we're watching out for and maybe one or two different player SBCs. Watch for links to the player SBCs today. I know a lot of people are kind of watching Bundesliga for the Javi Simons. I hope that SBC is cheap and I kind of hope it's today. Also, maybe this much of a potential for a cup, but we had one for week two of RTTK and we kind of have that Evo objective. So maybe not a cup this week. We will have to see. We'll see if EA surprises us today as well with any sort of content. But if you guys enjoyed the video today, drop a thumbs up on it. Subscribe if you are new. Comment uh, down below if you have any questions. And of course, I will see you in a video tomorrow. There won't be a stream today, but I'll see you in a video tomorrow. This has been Nate Food Account. See you guys there. Peace out.